Well, this is the final session of our study through 2 Corinthians 3, 12 to 4, 6, and we did not save the easiest part for last. We have learned that there is a veil over our Bibles keeping us from seeing the glory of God. Only by believing in Jesus is the veil removed. It is removed by the Holy Spirit who dwells in us like a new tent of meeting and gives us the freedom to see the glory of God throughout the Bible. As we see the glory of God, we are changed into the glory of God. And then last session, we learned that Paul is not tampering with God's word, but is presenting it in its full radiance and glory. Everything points to Jesus. Saying anything less would be to put the veil back. But what about those who pick up the Bible and no matter what, just cannot see anything glorious about it? They don't see Jesus. Sure, they may read the word Jesus and even listen carefully to the stories about him. They may say he is a wonderful teacher or a compassionate person after whom we should model our lives. How can we say that there is all this glory in our Bibles, glory that would change us as we behold it, if people pick it up every day and see nothing but words on a page? Well, Paul has our answer. And I'll warn you, it is not what we want to hear. He says, even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. So why can't people see the glory of Christ? It's because their minds are blinded by Satan. The veil remains, not only over the Bible, but over the whole gospel. They cannot see Jesus because of the veil. This is hard to hear. We want the answer to be, well, it's because they're stubborn, or they are just too sinful to see Jesus. But that's not the answer we are given. The answer we are given is, they are blind. There is a very real spiritual barrier over the minds of unbelievers. And unless that veil is removed, no amount of faith in Jesus is even possible. No apologetic or act of service or argument or sermon can change their hearts. That is because they are not rejecting you, they are rejecting Jesus himself. This is what Paul writes next. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. So if we can't change them, what will? Well, Paul has our answer here as well. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shone in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. God shone the light of Jesus into our hearts. He gave us knowledge of Jesus. He revealed to us the face of Jesus. God must remove the veil. This brings us full circle back to the question we asked ourselves at the beginning. How is the veil removed? We learned that the veil is removed by turning to Christ. That is how the veil is removed for us as Christians so we can see the light of gospel in every corner of scripture. But it's also how every single person has the veil removed themselves. They must turn to God. And now this is one of the numerous places throughout scripture where we butt up against the tension between God's sovereignty and man's free will. Can someone turn to God unless God shines the light of the gospel on their hearts? No, God must first do the illuminating. But can someone have the veil removed without turning to God? No, they must turn, they must repent, they must come. You see, we try to build a tension where there is none. God shines his light and we turn. Both are true. So how then should we pursue our unbelieving friends? Pray for them. Ask God to shine the light of the gospel in their hearts and minds. Pray that God would remove the veil. Then act. Share the gospel with them. Teach them about Jesus. Love them in the name of Christ. Pray and share. Finally, what does all of this have to say directly to us as Christians? Well, there are two main things I want to end on. First is grace. The reason why you believe in Jesus at all 
the reason why you are watching this video, the reason why you can read your Bible and see God's glory in it is all grace. God shone the light of the gospel onto your heart. You weren't smarter or luckier than everyone else. God was just gracious to you. He moved you. So give him thanks. Rejoice and be glad that you can see and believe Jesus. Thank him every day. Run to scripture and see what so few can, the light of Christ. The second thing has to do with the light of Christ itself. Listen to Paul's words in this final verse of our study. He says, the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. There is one thing that Moses wanted to see on Mount Sinai, the glory of God in his face, in its fullness. But such a vision would have killed him. So God only allowed him to see the backside of his glory through a little crack in a rock. Now this vision alone was too much for Moses, but there was more. And in Christ, we get that which Moses was refused. We get the face of God. And what is the face of God? It is the person of Jesus. The great news of the good news is that one day we will see God's face in Jesus Christ. We will behold the fullness of God's glory when we behold the fullness of the glorified Son of God. Even now, we get to get glimpses of that glory throughout our Bibles as we see the gospel in every corner of scripture. But each taste of it we get leads us into more and more yearning for that final day when we will see Jesus face to face. So behold him in your Bibles. Become like him in your lives. Be full of expectance for the day when he comes. Thank you for joining us through this study. May God bless you. Amen. Hey there, I'm David Bowden with Spoken Gospel. It's the mission of Spoken Gospel to speak the gospel out of every corner of scripture. And you've just watched one of the sessions that we try to do that in 2 Corinthians 3 and 4. If you missed the very first episode, we invite you to click here and see the very first episode in this series. If you want to learn more about what we're doing and get updates whenever we post new videos, click here to subscribe. And we would invite you to check out our Patreon page to learn how to support our ministry by clicking right down there. Thanks so much.